Hello. Rafael. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, and you can watch me now. Yep, I can hear you. Fantastic, is all. Yeah, well, I can I can see you. I uh, know oh, it, it was my fault. I, ha I have it. Oh, uh, okay, great. I have quit it. Okay, great. Okay, fantastic, is all. Thank you. Yeah, very much. well, I, I I've been struggling. <laughs> I know. I know it's, been, it's been hard for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, actually, in the last three weeks, I just started on the WebEx and uh, not Zoom, but uh, uh, Teams. Yeah. And now this Chrome. So everything is new to me. <laughs> and so, you know, so, well, it's, it's been a torture in the last four weeks. Now, all of a sudden, you suggested this Chrome. And what is Chrome? I don't know. <laughs> so uh, uh, I was uh, freaked out, but now I'm very happy. Uh, very happy. Uh, now, yeah. look, look, at, look at Arno Koch, one of the, uh, the guys that is in the, in the, in the chat. He's telling, he's, he's asking, is the, the first time I'm the work in a webinar, you know? So oh. you are not the only one in, in oh, really? learning well, new things in this day, in this moment, yeah? Yeah, well, actually just, you know, when was it? The, the, the 21st of April is the yeah. first day I used uh, WebEx to with yeah. my students. And so first maybe 10, 15 minutes, and I've been struggling, they are struggling and it's chaotic. And uh, yeah. now I'm getting a little bit used to, so uh, I, I feel very happy now. Okay, is uh, <laughs> fantastic. We we are doing it through here and also through YouTube, YouTube Live. You know? Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It would be nice. Nice, nice oh. to do it. Yeah? I don't know so, how many people will, will be attending, but it would be mm -hmm. nice. So people are attending from home, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some, yeah. Some, right, some right. of them probably will be doing it at work, you know, but... At work? Oh, okay. Time zone oh, is different. Probably, oh. yeah. What time is it, your time? Now it's uh, 3, 3, 9 p.m. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, in the afternoon. So some people work in the office. Yeah, probably some of oh, them will Oh, I see, I see, I see. How is the coronavirus thing? Well, it's going much better. Yeah. Oh, really? Much oh. better. Also, some people believe it's over, but it's not. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so you can you can go out for shopping or you go out to the theater or restaurant? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Theater and restaurants. Oh. Restaurants is going to start opening, I think, in next Monday in Spain, but oh, very, yeah. oh, limited yeah. spots. very limited well, spots. I see, I see. Well, in, in Japan, originally the um, it was we are we've been advised to stay at home until yesterday, mm -hmm. but it's extended one more month. No, toward the end of this month. Mm -hmm. So uh, and now just small business owners are go bankrupt so easily because they have to pay all the. Salaries, everything, the rent, everything, but still they don't, get, they don't receive any money coming in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be hard times. Yeah? Right, right. I, I'm going to put in, the, in here yeah. one of my friends that is in there is Arno Koch. Mm -hmm. Arno, mm -hmm. can you hear me? Arno, I've made you presenter just for a moment. How are you, Arno? Probably he's gone. To take some coffee. He's a Dutch. Oh, really? oh I see. Oh, 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 oh no, cough. Cock. Yeah. Cock. Okay. He's a, um, he's a Spanish guy. Yeah, and no, he's business. A Dutch. He's Dutch guy. Oh, the, oh, really? Living in Spain. Same time in Spain. Now oh. there's some people you will know in here also. It's Nacho Arribas. I don't know if Nacho would like to go live for a minute. Nacho. Nacho, te apetece? Do you feel like going, Nacho? No, I no, I hear you. Arno, if you have problems regarding regarding uh, sound, uh, probably it's because of the the browser you are using. Try to use uh, Google Chrome. Google Chrome. Oh, 
Okay, Yana, I will give you, I will give you, I will make you presenter just for a moment, okay? You have your camera and your microphone. You can talk, Arno, if you want. Arno is the Dutch guy that it was his first time in a webinar, Arno. Ah, yeah. That works. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Great, this technology. Fantastic. Fantastic. This is the uh, 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 Isao. This is Arno is the, the Dutch guy. That he, mm -hmm. Today is going to be his first webinar ever. Yeah, oh, really? He connects anything like this, you know? So. Oh, what was, what was him with me? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to know I'm an IT engineer. Oh, he said, uh, somebody <laughs> says hi. Mr. Yosinia, you know, Virginia, you know, Virginia. 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 Virgin Virgilio, Virgilio probably sounds better. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So he is he, he's a Spanish guy. Vir, uh, I think Virgilio, Virgilio. I think he's from Venezuela. I think if he was. Yeah, oh, I know. oh, he speaks Spanish. Yeah. Okay. But uh, but he's a Spanish uh, language and uh, and he met you in Spain. One of your trips to Spain. He was in oh. one of your of your seminars. You know. Oh, really? Have I met him before? Yeah, probably. We oh, met so oh, many yeah. people in Spain when you were here. Oh, I see, I see, yeah. I see. Yeah. Only I don't remember. Yeah, of course, <laughs> we'll be like, like crazy. Uh, and I don't know, how are things going in, in Holland? Well, actually, I'm in Belgium uh, the last uh, couple of eight weeks, and uh, I have oh, yeah. never been productive at now, so because nobody is pushing me to go anywhere, there is no stress. It's fabulous. It's fabulous. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Very Fantastic. Making new e learning courses for Makigami. So, um, yeah. Isao, Isao, uh, Arno Koch is yeah. one of the best, probably renowned people in, 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 in continuous improvement. He, for me, he is the master in, in OE. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Arno is the master in OE. Yeah. And also the master in Makigami. Then Makigami is a uh, a tool that oh. was not invented from from you, you know, Arno, but it really is a fantastic tool to analyze processes and and probably you could write down in your in the in the chat your your website, uh, Arno, just to let the people know about about your 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 thing, your Makigami process improvement thing. Eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably, Katie will be joining in in a while. Eh? Makigami.info. I, I recommend you, I fully recommend you to go into the website and, and know Arno's job of this. And Arno has been working a lot with hospitals itself. Hmm? In, in hospitals, continuous improvement in hospitals, like, like oh, Toyota. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like Toyota oh, really? Japan, yeah? Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I learned from Okamura son from GIPM. Tokyo mm -hmm. and brought it here and then I it, the technology was well, in Japanese so we couldn't make it here because it was written in vertical strains and so on so we we made it European style and then last 15 years or something like that I've been training it on some universities and now here in Europe it's being used as a let's say an alternative to value stream maps for for uh, for office and non-visual uh, processes and it works fabulous it's, uh, Simple but very effective tool, like many of the Japanese tools that we that yeah. we got. Yeah. So, and simple, yeah. yeah. It's beautiful, yes. simple. Yeah. Simplicity is the word, huh? and it's not it's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. Uh, Get something yeah. out. Huh? Fantastic. Yeah, beautiful. I don't know if Katie will be joining in a in a minute. Okay. I think so. I Anyone think so. else would like to go live and talk about himself or whatever?
no one is going it likes to talk yeah <laughs> We have Nick Arthur is from uh, Florida. I think Nick was telling he was uh, he was connected from Florida. Hi Nick, is it real or, or much? I don't know if he was. Was the guy was was connecting from Florida? Uh, Rafa, uh, somebody is talking to you, but I can't hear oh, yeah. you. Okay. okay. Oh no, I will. I will with you, and I will ask some other. Okay. I think it was Matt, the one that was talking. Matt, 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 Matt. We have Matt in here. So how can I uh, get the voice from other participant? You don't hear the other people talking? No, no, no only you. Whoa. Maybe I should, I should, uh, uh, something I need to do. And we haven't solved it finally. Probably this is the problem of having three people. Matt, can, you can go live. Hello Matt. Hello, Matt. Yeah, Katie, you are you are in. Okay, sorry, Matt. Uh, I will I will put uh, Katie because Katie have to do some things in here, and we have to prepare some final things. Sorry, Katie, 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 Katie is in. Hello, Katie. Oh, Katie is trying to get in. Yeah, yeah. She, she I has see. Right now. I see. I see. Gracias, Virgilio. Eh? Katie. I don't know why. Oh, okay, I'm loading the slides. Okay, fantastic. Mm, I don't know what happens to be honest. Katie, can you, can you hear me? I don't know, Katie. 
Uh, Isao, can you hear uh, Katie? I can't. No, no. I, I'm, I'm only I can hear you, but uh, I but can't hear anybody. What is, what is happening? Show my video. I'm showing your video. I'm supposed to. Tenemos ocho minutos. We have eight minutes to solve the little problems we are having at the moment. So we will see what happens. Okay, it's because probably it's because of Katie uploading the slides in the in the app. Probably is the reason why it's not in. Uh, video and sound mode. You saw what time is in Japan? Uh, 10 25. I mean, uh, not midnight. PM. So you will be like a little tired, yeah? No, not really. Not really, okay. because I always go to bed at 12 o'clock. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me show a message to the people just to know what should they do. And don't forget to use uh, Google Chrome as a browser or any other, but updated last version. Okay, please. Otherwise you could have some problems regarding voice, video, different things that we will be using. Okay. okay. Katie, did you finish with your? No, Matt, nothing to do with that. My, uh, Katie is uploading the slides, and this is a reason why she's not like going live at the moment. No problem with you, Matt.
I'm going to do one thing, okay? I will switch it off and go back in a minute. Okay, I will switch off this one, this one at the moment. Okay. Oh, I can see Katie. Katie, I can hear you. I can hear you. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. I can hear you. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, but actually, I was talking with uh, Rafa, but I, I couldn't hear anybody else. So, yeah. uh, is it? You probably will not hear other people because they are not um, in presenter mode. I think maybe because he is the host, um, that he is able to hear more people. So oh, I see. Uh, okay. okay. To know. Only. Oh, okay. So he's saying that he's sending him a text message. We'll figure it out. But only two people can talk at the same time. Mm -hmm. Why is this late? No, we are finally all three. Whoa. You have a good night's nice sleep. <laughs> Just in time, just in what time. What time, yeah? Oh, I'm good. We're the, the Rafa is back. Typo, right? <laughs> I can hear you. I can hear you, Rafa. You cannot hear me, Isa? I can hear Katie, but I can hear you. You cannot, or you can? I, I can hear you, Katie, but I cannot hear Rafa. Whoa. Okay. Uh, well, that's better I, that he can hear me, because we're at least going to have the conversation. But I can hear both mm -hmm. of you. Mm -hmm. And me too. I don't know what happens. Probably the thing of the click meeting. Yeah, you can you can hear Rafa talk, Katie. Yeah, I can hear you both. And this is what yeah. happened oh. last time, isn't it? Right when um, mm, I okay. came. In. Well, as long as this Al and I can hear each other, then um, that at least is fine for our part of the presentation. Yeah. So. Mm, yeah. Okay. P uh, the people, at least the people, is uh, listening at all three of us. So that's all right. When I, I was, I'm not talking, I will mute my, my microphone just in case something uh, uh, can help. Okay, but I will start recording uh, this also, okay, recording the, the webinar. And uh, normally I start one minute before, after the expected time. So it's, it's 3.30, we'll wait for one minute, okay? And then the people that is not on time is really their fault. Yeah, it's not ours. <laughs> the most important thing is the three of us are on time. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is that we are in three different time zones. Yeah, so my coffee's kicking in too. It's the six thirty a.m. in breakfast mode. Yeah, <laughs> I'm in the siesta mode in Spain. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. And so and ten thirty p.m. in Japan. He's almost going to bed. So yeah. Yeah. so different different things uh, funny funny world you know okay it's, it's 331 so we are going to start okay first of all probably the best thing would be to present all three probably katie girls first probably you can present yourself uh, first first of all and sure. then go to Josino to present himself okay Okay, do you want to do, since you're our host, would you like to kick us off? Just present yourself, yeah? Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Katie Anderson. I'm based in the San Francisco Bay Area in California, so it's 6.30 a.m. I'm having a nice cup of coffee, and I'm so happy to be here with all of you around the world. Uh, I'm a coach and consultant for Lean and Leadership, and I had the pleasure of moving to Japan five years ago, where I first developed a friendship with Isao Yoshino, and then four years ago, met uh, Rafael when he was visiting uh, Spain, sorry, when he was in, in Japan from, just from Spain, uh, and we all got to know each other then. And so it's wonderful to be all here together. And I'm uh, really looking forward to sharing some content in the book that I've written uh, about Isao's experiences at Toyota 
and what it means to be a leader and a learner and creating a people-centered culture. So we're really um, thrilled to be here together with you and uh, looking forward to both the conversation, presentation, and a discussion this morning, or this afternoon or this evening, depending on where you are. Uh, Mr. Yoshino, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I can hear you. Only I just I can hear Katie. But anyway, um, my name is Isao Yoshino. I'm already retired, but I'm still, uh, still uh, doing pretty busy. I don't know why. But anyways, um, today is really the first time for me to try this webinar thing because I'm just I'm no expert on, on the computer. So, but this is very, very good opportunity for me to talk with so many people around the world. And I would like to share my own experience, but it's not uh, actually Katie wrote a book and it will be published pretty soon. And uh, maybe it's, if you buy it and you can uh, see all those details, however, tonight and uh, or today, just we are going to talk a little bit about the key topics about uh, uh, why we met, why we are still learning with each other. Anyways, mm -hmm. uh, please feel free to ask questions. And uh, even though I cannot hear you guys, but still it's very, very good opportunity to exchange opinions through uh, online. So nice to talk to you guys. Fantastic, Isao. Fantastic, Katie. Yes, so so I'm, I will present myself also. Uh, some of you know about me. Probably I'm Rafa Lucero. I'm from Spain. I'm in the, in the central, in the central time, time zone, European time zone. I'm also an industrial engineer and I, I'm in the lean business world since September 11th, 2001. Yeah, it's, a good time to start things. It's like almost like these uh, complicated times, you know. Uh, we're going to be here until 5 p.m. Spanish time, one hour and a half. Yeah, uh, and uh, let me let me let me go through. I will do a little introduction <laughs> of the session uh, initially, uh, uh, and then I will I will uh, I will pass uh, uh, Katie and Josino that they are really the important the important guys today that uh, because of we have uh, a lot of people in here in the webinar and and we have also a lot of people in in in, in youtube live uh, that is is the first thing i do youtube live at the same time that I, we are running this uh, this this click meeting session uh, uh, I, I would like to show you uh, the ideas that we could share with you okay this is the little summary uh, session intro is going to be uh, 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 really really short okay as Katie told you uh, we, uh, we 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 meet each other in, in Japan in one of the Spanish trips we we, we, we used to do every every year you know uh, and I, I knew Katie because he's fantastic blog Katie probably you could you could write down your blog in the in the chat in chat area. Katie has a fantastic blog regarding regarding leadership regarding Japan because she was in as as, as she will she will uh, tell you she was living in Japan for three years and he started to share a lot of experiences in Japan and I knew Katie in the website and once I was there uh, we met it one day uh, he presented me Sao you know then I met Isao, so. Uh, just to know, little the, the, the world is so little, you know. Uh, the world is really so little. Uh, Josino, as, as some of you know, uh, uh, traveled to, uh, to Spain with me several times, yeah? even with some not very good experiences uh, in, in in one of the trees. Uh, but really, has, I wanted to show you how to how to Katie will tell you about about this a lot. Uh, the world is really little, you know, and we have to take profit uh, in the good sense, of course, uh, one of each other, because because uh, it's always a learning learning situation, you know. Uh, let me let me go for ten minutes, maximum fifteen minutes, about my idea of of of, of, of this continuous improvement, this uh, uh, lean thing, you know, because you know the the consultants, the teachers in in, in lean. We are always uh, inventing new words, new areas, you know. And because of that, <laughs> I, I, I have I have developed a little little word 
to, in order for you to remember about what continuous improvement is, at least for me, you know, okay, it, it, it's not real true because because it's my 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 model, you know, but it's it's it's, it's called 4P29. This is a way of 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 understanding continuous improvement in probably in a different way that you have you had ever seen you know and the the four p29 model is uh, about four words that starts with p and i'm going to start with three the three the three first of them you know three three words that start with p that are common to any any company regarding the the how big this company is if if you work for the public sector if you work for hospital if you, you work in the automotive industry if you, if you work for whatever the industry or sector of the service sector and, and these three words are completely necessary in order to not only start even to maintain the continuous improvement in a proper way okay i, I talk about these three p's you know first p of course is people and we are, to, we are going to talk a lot about this uh, in the webinar today. All this is about people. Yeah. The second P is processes. We have to, we should have ways. We have to do ways in order to, to know how to do the things because normally the companies, the people is doing the things in a, in, 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 in a way, but it's not a defined way. And if you don't have a defined way, how do you know who is doing the right things or even the, the good things or the bad things? So processes are really important. And, and, and for sure, uh, Katie will talk about that today also, you know. And the third P I talk is, is problems. That I'm sure Katie will talk about that uh, for sure today also. What is continuous improvement? Continuous improvement is always with the people, yeah, trying to improve the processes that we are having in order to minimize the problems because problems we are going to have problems always and we have to we have to realize that it's a good thing to have problems because if i always say that if we if we didn't have problems probably uh, all of you wouldn't have a job yeah, because None of you are working adding value in your in your company. So, okay, this, this is my first introduction. I don't I don't want to to tell you too much about uh, all my, my my model 4P29. You know, but remember that customers are important. But the most important point is the people that is working in your company. And I love this picture. I, I could be with this uh, one hour, but but it's not my time. You know, but forget about this pyramid. The normal pyramid in the companies, the common and control model, the where the managers are telling the people what to think, what to do, and even shut up. This is not the right model. We should try to put the pyramid in the other way, in the other direction, and, and helping the people that is adding value, that is working in our companies. I love this sentence in, in, in Japanese proverb. You know, if, if, if people work for you, you work for them. We are here, we are in the companies to help the people in the day-to-day -day problems. Mm, oh, by the way, I forget, I forget to do one, uh, one important thing that I used to do in every webinar. Yeah, it's, it's the first, the initial survive. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me, let me go through this little survive. This is probably even, even stupid, yeah, but I realize of it. You can you can do it, you can vote three different questions about where are you attending the webinar from. Okay. The second question is if you have ever visited Japan, mm -hmm. and if you would like would like to do it, and regarding your actual knowledge in Python, Lean, or whatever the name you you wanted to. To add, I look at the uh, the possible answers. You know, in the in the last question is still a big road to cover. <laughs> I added it. Sorry about my.
mainly 60 percent almost is people from Spain, and then the second position is from US. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then we have some other parts of Europe, other from America. Only nine percent of the people has visited Japan. Opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> and 52% would like to enroll someday to to know about Japan and, and Kite and study missions. Yeah? So good opportunity. Yeah? And regarding knowledge in, you know, there's a lot of experience in the people over here, you know, uh, uh, like 20% uh, of the people more than 12 years in the lean continuous improvement business katie so so whoa great level really yeah and some of them that have no idea yeah it's also this is it's also this is also also good yeah this is also good Wonderful. okay everyone is a learner and a leader so yeah 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 always always learning i i, I put this in my in my in my i think it's in my twitter account Perpetual learner, you know, we are perpetual learners. Also, okay, thank you. I will, I will finish the the, the survey and I will go, go back to my my presentation. But but I don't want to to go too much in in detail because 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 Katie and and, and Isa are the important people. But let me go through this leadership mnemonic I've done. It's, of course, it's mine. I have not invented the wheel, you know. But uh, regarding lean and leadership, that we are going to talk to today about that, I have developed this mnemonic. You know, with every every capital letter, every initial letter, I have written down some important thing that we should have as leaders. You know, if I would do the the survey about what's the most important point. Probably some of them would arise like humility, probably respect, probably practice or persistence, a lot of different things, you know, but something that I'm always learning, Katie, is the L from listening, yeah? <laughs> that if we want to be real good leaders, yeah, we should develop all this in a good, in a good manner. Uh, I will I will send it to you if you want uh, all this uh, leadership mnemonic. Okay, I don't want to to stall you too much time. You know, but regarding the uh, the the four P twenty nine, I would just uh, told you about the twenty nine seconds rule. I don't know if you have ever heard about the twenty nine seconds rule. I think I I I, 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 I the first time I I listened to that was with Norman Bodek. Yeah. And it's regarding the Kaizen concept, you know. What's this, what's this 29 seconds, uh, Katie? Uh, normally, at least in Spain, uh, we, we, we work, or, or we were like eight hours, you know. Eight hours is 4,800 minutes, and in seconds is 28,000, whatever, 800 seconds, you know. And 28.8 seconds is the 0.1% of the time we're working, okay? Uh, sorry, it's a little confusing. Yeah, it's, it's, I have an engineering uh, head, you know? But in order to not uh, to appear too, too strange, I have rounded this 28.8 to 29. You know, Katie? You, you, you get this, yeah, 20, yeah. this 29? Yeah, okay. And what's this all about? Okay. Imagine what would happen in any of your companies if only today, everybody working in your company improve the way they work in 29 seconds. What would happen today in your companies, Katie? In every company that today, they would improve 0.1%. You follow me, Katie? I am following you. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine this is, this is, this is the, the good point. If all of you understand all these, then it's like little history. The, the, the funny thing is how to do that. We can maintain it every day for one month. And in one month, we would improve 3%. If everybody, every day, 
but improve just a little bit, you know? And if we maintain it for one year, we would improve 33% in one year. And if we maintain it that every day, everybody in everywhere of your companies was improving just almost nothing, because 20 seconds is almost nothing, really. In three years' time, we would improve 100%. This is my concept of Kaizen, you know, yeah. every day. But everybody, this is the real important thing that our friends from Toyota have really done in a, in, in, in a good way. Yeah? I remember that, that some time ago, uh, Isao uh, uh, even, even sent me the, the, the initial suggestion system in Toyota that was built in 1953, you know, Katie? And do you know how many suggestions they have taken from the employees in that time, in this time? Hundreds More of thousands. than 100 million little <laughs> ideas. 100 million. Probably they are now in 200 million. But what happens normally in the, in the, in the non-Toyota companies? That we have a few ideas, yeah? Only the management is, is getting few ideas and big ideas with big impact, you know? But this is not Kaiten. Yeah? Kaiten is to have many ideas from all the people that is working in the companies. Many ideas, little, little impact and done in, in a minute and in one day. This is, this is the thing, this is the thing, okay? Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop in here, you know, because otherwise I'm going to mix to match. Yeah, and, and I really believe people would like to to know about you, yeah, would like about Josino, yeah, and probably uh, it's enough for me today. Yeah, I will I will even uh, uh, finish the presentation now, and I will get the people like anxious to know about the two piece, uh, two other piece or three other piece. Probably they can ask about it. Uh, and Katie, this is your time. Uh, I will I will even in order to know if it, it's better. I will switch off my audio at the moment in order to know if if Yosino can and, and can hear it better. And it's your time. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. We'll come back. We'll come back in, and we can all have a discussion and open it okay. for okay. questions from the audience too. And I'll be watching the chat as well. So. Um, okay. Perfect. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can get in. We were trying out a new software. All right. This is all uploaded well. Mm -hmm. um, Fantastic. All right. And okay. Great. And then. I'm hearing a little bit of feedback, Rafael. I'm not sure if that's from you or from, from me, but we'll just get started. So welcome everyone again. Um, what a great introduction from Rafael to um, get, put some context around what Mr. Yoshino and I are here to talk about. And uh, it's been such an honor for me to get to know Mr. Yoshino over the last five years and not only um, professionally, but now personally as well. And I was a lean practitioner when I moved to Japan and the level of knowledge and the depth of, I guess the, just the, the, the depth behind the principles that I had long been taught, I, I have a new appreciation and I'm really thrilled to be able to share them with you here. And I'm trying to figure out how to advance the slide. Sorry, this is a new thing for me here. All right, here we go. So we already did our introductions. Um, and what's really thrilling is just a few weeks ago, we announced the, the book that is coming out in July. I'll have more information at the end. Um, you should be able to pre-order it actually next week. And it contains all of the, the stories that we're gonna talk, touch on a bit here today. And, and what's really exciting is you're gonna get to hear from uh, Mr. Yoshino today from his own perspective about these experiences. Um, and this is a picture of me. It was exactly a few weeks ago was the five year anniversary of me first meeting up with Mr. Yoshino. This is my husband here um, in in Nagoya. We had just moved to Japan for my husband's job, actually. But I was very excited uh, for the opportunity for myself. And I made my husband take the day off of work. And we went down um, and met up with Mr. Yoshino and he took us to Toyota City. I thought it was going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity. And little did I know that I would um, 
be leading study trips to Japan and writing the book with Mr. Yoshino five years later. Mm -hmm. uh, we, met, we would meet up regularly in his office and talk. I would jump on the bullet train and now we collaborate around the world. And Raphael showed this picture earlier. Uh, mm -hmm. it, was, it was really fun to, you know, because of the blog I started writing when I was living in Japan, I thought it was a really a unique opportunity for me as a uh, lean practitioner to be living in Japan. And I wanted to share that knowledge with other people, which is why I um, started writing the blog. And so it was great that Raphael reached out saying, I'm going to be in Japan. Uh, we met up in Nagoya, which is where I introduced him to Mr. Yoshino and they've developed a relationship. And then we had, this is dinner in Tokyo a few days later. Mm. Uh, and now that is the output of this um, collaboration, Mr. Yoshino and I have been working with intention and purpose for the last two years to capture his stories and insights from over 40 years. Uh, and I'm gonna ask him a question now because one of the big themes of our experience and working on this book together is the concept of Hansei, of reflection and of learning. And Raphael touched on this earlier, the, uh, I can say this morning, but wherever you are, whatever time zone you're on, <laughs> earlier about how, um, how learning never ends. And Mr. Yoshino has really, uh, reflected on that for himself that he's learning and relearning more about his life through the process of being asked questions and uh, and thinking. Please, uh, Mr. Yoshin, I want to turn this over to you yeah. and, yes. and on what are some of your reflections about the process of working on um, this book together? Well, actually, a um, long time ago, just Katie uh, was talking about her idea to write a book about Toyota. And uh, then I was asked to, to have an interview, and then through all those interviews, he just she wants to get some all the history through one person. And uh, you know, basically, you know, uh, when I we talk about it, you know, I don't remember not so many things which is now included in the book because you know there are so many bad memories, so many so many miserable memories. <laughs> I ran into what I was working on Toyota, good things and bad things. It's a mixture. And bad things, I just wanted to forget about it. I don't want to keep it. I don't want to remember that. So I did not dig down all those bad memories. However, while we are talking, Katie and I are talking about, about all those questions, talking about all those you know, book content, I found out that we can learn so many things, good things, from the failure, from from the unhappy ending, or from uh, or the bad situation, we can learn so many things. At the same time, we can learn very little from the success stories. So, I found out that okay, this book writing uh, it, it requires a lot of interviewing. So maybe this is going to be a very very exciting one, one year or one and a half year. You know, be receiving interviews. So uh, this is great learning experience for me again. And uh, the, all the things, all the memories who, who were, you know, hid, hidden somewhere. And I don't even remember <laughs> that I just uh, did it. But still, she, she keeps asking me so details, keep asking me why, why is that? So, so that is a very good opportunity for me to look back and, and uh, try to try my best to look back. Then I... If, I dig down uh, again, on just like a farming, dig down again and found out that, oh, this is what happened. So this is a great learning experience. So uh, uh, in the book, you will, if you buy a book, you will notice that this is a story of my life within Toyota, but it's not my personal life, doesn't matter. It's not so important. So. Uh, this is a great learning, and I also looking back and reviewing or doing Hansei, or looking back what you have done or you have not done, is a very very great source of the new energy, which can be generated within you. It's been a really special experience. Uh, Mr. Yoshino and I were uh, running through the slides just so he had an overview of the the context, and he said, "I." I'm not saying things exactly the same way as I said them before. And I said, no, it's, it's great because the nuances and the, the small differences of memory or expression, I, I learned something new from that every time too. And so I uh, I think that's the beauty of, of memory and conversation is it's not always exactly the same. Um, and you uncover different elements at different times, but it, 
we can't keep putting more things in the book. So <laughs> that, that's, that's why these web are great. Um, so th thank you. Uh, Rafa, could you, do I need to put the slides back on? Yeah. How do I shift back to that? Oh, great, thank you. I, one of my realizations through this process is, and I, I knew this before, so I, again, it's just the richness of understanding that's happened through my experience of living in Japan and, and really through my relationship with Mr. Yoshino as well, is that reflection is not the, is the beginning, it's not the end of learning. So, you know, we, we do a plan, do, study, adjust cycle. It's actually, we start with the adjustment. We start with the reflection, the learning, and then we move forward and create. And so, um, similarly, a book's never, you know, it's just one point in time of reflections to then how do we use that information and thinking to help us move forward into the future and, um, and, and keep learning. I also wanted to share with you, oh, this is exciting. <laughs> one of my large Garunas here. Um, I, I got this in Japan a year ago, and it actually has the word intention on it. I have a very large Garuna collection. There's a, there's a saying in Japanese, a proverb, and Raphael shared one earlier, fall down seven times, get up eight. And I really, uh, this, this, this proverb meant a lot to me over the, the last few years of um, working towards a goal. And Darumas are weighted at the bottom. It's about having a goal and then it's falling down and getting back up to achieve your goal. Uh, it's that we're gonna have challenges and failures along the way, but it's about getting up and persevering. Mr. Rich, you know, I was, it would be great for the audience to hear from your perspective um, what this Japanese proverb has meant to you in your life. Well, actually, you know, fall down seven times and getting up eight. That means, well, seven does not necessarily mean seven or eight or six. Seven is many numbers. See, not one, one time, two times. Seven is many opportunities. So uh, seven, fall seven, uh, seven times, that means if you fail seven times, don't get depressed. That means seven times, ten times, many, many times. Don't get depressed because you have a, it's a you. It, it things will turn turn right to better one. So don't you know give give it up. So that is a, a very very important lesson that we need to keep in mind. So you know in, in our life there are so many things happen, good things, bad things happen, and so it's so important to get back. I don't know why seven times, four seven times, and getting up. Uh, eight. So what, what's the difference between seven and eight? Because, you, <laughs> but you know, probably, you know, seven, again, it, it's many numbers, yeah. big numbers. And also it tells us, the, tell us a very important lesson that, you know, whatever happens to you, bad things, but still don't lose your hope. Because as long as you are serious about your future, about your endeavor, then things will pick up. Mm -hmm. And actually, I learned from my own experience, this happens to me. In my case, maybe 13, four, seven, 13 times <laughs> and getting back 14 or 15. So this is really true. So this is one of the most, you know, uh, appreciated uh, proverb in Japan. Never and of course, up, it comes yeah. from China. Everything comes from China, including mm -hmm. coronavirus. But <laughs> this is, and this is one of the things that come from China. Yep. It's this about is a fantastic <laughs> message. This one from the actual That's time. Right. And I think in this, and you mentioned the pandemic, I think that it now more than ever, this this uh, sense of how do we get up and keep moving forward is really important. Yeah, but this is a fantastic message from these complicated times, eh? really. Eh? Yes. It's going to be hard times for a lot of people, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. We will get up. All yeah, right, sure. mm. share the slides, please. Yeah. Great. Um, I also want to share this, this word of intention that's been really important to me. It actually, I, just, I got this personally inscribed with that same kanji. You can see it there uh, when I was by the monks in Japan. When I when I got business cards made in Japan five years ago, I had already started my own company, but I didn't have a business logo. So I said, put the words for uh, for intention on my card because it's a word that means uh, means a lot to me. And I learned that this uh, the lower part of the symbol on the left means heart and the one on the right means direction and it came to take a new sort of deeper nuance for me on what the word intention is and, I'm, and the reason i'm sharing this is because it's also important for us to think about as leaders and as learners um what's really important to us what's important inside as people and then as leaders of people what are we what are we trying to accomplish and that has meaning here 
And then how do we align our actions and our behaviors in that direction? And so it's creating awareness for ourselves for purpose and heart. And you'll hear that, uh, that sense of this throughout uh, our discussion here today that leading with the heart is really important. And then how do you have sense of direction and where you're going as well and, and to connect those two? Mm -hmm. so I just want to offer that as well. It's really important for us to have the connection of heart and direction. Okay. Uh, and I included this, this quote, because I've learned a lot from Mr. Yoshino about what respect means. We hear, you know, of course, that, uh, you know, respect for people and continuous improvement are the two pillars of the Toyota way. Uh, but respect has a really deeper meaning at, uh, for Toyota people. And I wanted Mr. Yoshino to talk about that with, uh, with you here, because it's been, uh, it's been really enlightening for me too, the, the, the deeper nuances of what this respect really means. Um, Mr. Yoshino, I turn it over to you. Yeah. And what what this pillar of respect for people really really embodies at Toyota? Well, actually, the as far as I remember, the first time well, not necessarily first time, but actually almost the first time I heard about this word respect, uh, and the comment in the top management, I, I think it was around 2001 when Toyota Way, which is new, not necessarily new, but another comment key comment from top management came out and uh, so respect means but there are just like uh, katie said the respect means a little bit deeper than it looks and it, so it, it, within toyota we have a slightly different uh, 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 meaning uh, keep in mind and uh, usually you know respect uh, is uh, is considered to be sometimes considered to be just nice to be everybody or boss, you know, if it talks about the bosses, respected boss needs to treat people nice and then the, being nice to everyone working for him or uh, superficially nice or something like that. But within Toyota, the respect means a little bit deeper. And one of the things is everybody is different. Everybody has a different character, different way of thinking, different code, personal code, different values. So. Uh, uh, the people who are the top of the of the group, and uh, you have so many people, then you have to value each person's dif you know difference, and each person's value. And there is no one only one value, but there are so many values. So that is so important. That is part of respect. And another thing is that you know the people are very very important because uh, it's it's not machine that makes cars, but it's who handles the machine? People. And the people always make sure that the machine works fine all the time. So maintenance, all this, you know, take care of the machine. People, without people, so we cannot make good quality cars. So people are so important. So uh, it's so important. We just, we spend eight, more than eight hours a day. So you spend more hours, they spend more hours than they spend uh, with their families. So uh, we have to treat them just like a family members. So uh, people, um, we have to make people feel happy working in the same place for more than eight hours. So also, um, people have different opinion, different idea, and probably if you're a boss, then people have no much, much better than the, their work. Because the boss is not doing, making cars, but workers just actually making cars. So they have lots of, lots of new ideas. So they like to be heard. So they are enjoying to be heard, to enjoy the feeling that they are heard. So bosses always has to ask people, has to make sure that they, you know, all the people's good idea is heard. So that is part of the respect. And also taking care of the people means develop, help develop themselves. So all those things are just one word, respect. So respect is not only one, you know, uh, a thing from lower rank people toward uh, uh, upper people. It's not. It's so different from regular meaning. So that's why the meaning of respect 2001 and Mr. Cho, uh, uh, President Cho, wanted to point out is that we don't, are not supposed to forget this very, very hardcore meaning underneath this word. Only just, just only one word, but there are so many meanings about it. So that is. Uh, the very basic co uh, concept behind this uh, this uh, small, tiny word. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
one of the things that I, I learned from you, and this is in the book too, about how uh, there are two meanings of the word respect in Japanese. So we have, in, as it translates to English, we just have the word respect, but there's two symbols for respect in Japanese. One is uh, like respect to a senior person, and it's like direct respect to one pe person, or there's respect right. for humanity and for humanness. And that is mm -hmm. the respect for people that's included in uh, in the Toyota Way 2001. And that's a very different nuance than we, we often think of just respect as, oh, I'm, you know, I'm respecting you as an individual. No, this is I'm respecting you for hu your humanity. And that is a, that's a mm -hmm. different picture. Yeah. Uh, different mm -hmm. meaning and so absolutely um, really powerful i actually realized just now i have my um my toyota pen from the, <laughs> the, from the back of this it says good thinking good product and so that's that, right. that yeah. really shows that um toyota leads with thinking about people first and then the product absolutely right. absolutely right. fantastic lean with my leadership mnemonic yeah? listening the yeah. most important point yeah yeah. Okay, we're going right here. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, taking a step back in time, almost six years ago was the first time I actually even had really heard of um, Isao Yoshino. Of course, I had read um, and used Managing to Learn, which is the book about A3 thinking that John Shook had written. Um, and Mr. Yoshino is uh, credited in the acknowledgement there as the person who taught John Shook about A3 thinking along with um, another manager that had reported to Mr. Yoshino. Uh, I was at a conference and this is right a few weeks after we found out we were moving to Japan and it was just serendipity and luck that Mr. Yoshino happened to be in town as well. And he was up on stage with John Shook. And this is uh, just after this is when we first met and he gave me his business card and said, look me up. But I was so taken by both um, Mr. Yoshino's warmth and humor on the stage and uh, I'll let him, you can, dem he'll demonstrate that for you here to himself, but also, and also his profound, profound thinking and introspection. And he doesn't remember saying this, but it has struck me yeah. so profoundly and has become really uh, my personal guide on how I think about leadership and also how I coach and teach other people. And he said something to this effect that my aim to develop John Shook as his manager was giving him a mission or target and supporting him while he figured out how to reach the target. And as I was developing John, I was aware that I was developing myself as well. And I, this is so profound to me, and we're gonna dig into these three concepts here today, and I'll let Mr. Yoshino speak for himself about what these elements really mean to him as a leader. Um, but I took that as the simple things we can remember, a leader's role is to set the direction, to provide support, and to develop yourself. And if we can do all three of these, we are going to achieve great people-centered leadership in a culture of learning that's really connected with the heart um, and in that direction as well. So the first is um, the setting the direction. And uh, I'm, I have a lot to say about targets and setting directions as well, but I really want you to hear from uh, Mr. Yoshino on this. And I've uh, it's been really great reminder to me about uh, the, not just the importance of targets, but how to think about setting targets and um, and and what that means as a leader. And often in the West, we we forget about how important having clear targets and direction is. At Toyota, it's a given. Um, and I want Mr. Yoshino to talk about how uh, something I've learned from him is to set a seemingly impossible target. And the way I take that as target should be determined by what is needed, not what's achievable. Uh, Mr. Yoshino, can you talk more about this this comment that you say often to me that targets should be seemingly impossible? Why do you say that? Well, actually, if uh, the target is very easy to attain, that then you don't. If you are an expert on something, then you don't have to work so hard. Hmm. But target is something. What that are, uh, one thing. Another is the target is given as uh, it is, should come from the need not from what, what you can do. So need come from somewhere else, not from you. So uh, target is something, it's just like a North Star, and you have, everybody, you have to bring everybody's attention toward one same goal. And uh, talking about the target, you know, uh, let me give you very quickly about how, what was my target, because I was in charge of the training uh, program of the new me, which is a joint venture between GM and Toyota. And New Me is a joint venture in, in California in 80, 1984. And at the time, you know, I was given, uh, I was uh, I was assigned to uh, that training program. And at the time, you know, 
the target, I was wondering, okay, new me uh, top management decided to send their shop floor uh, leaders to Japan for three weeks for training because uh, the, all the operation is run by Toyota style. See? And Toyota has offered all those manufacturing and uh, capability, manufacturing equipment, all those techniques and management, while GM offered the facility. So that is the condition. And anyway, so I was wondering what is the, what is the target of that new me president? And it was they they decided to send their uh, shop floor uh, leaders, and they want to change the new me workers' mindset and also. Uh, a culture, you know, shop floor culture from GM days to, to to Toyota, the new style. They wanted to change. They want to see the cultural change, and so that's why they send it to us. Then I was wondering, what is my target as as a as a section manager of the training course? And uh, I was wondering, so we are supposed to change their culture within only three weeks of training in Japan? We cannot. So what, what we just discussed a little bit when we start a program, so we discussed among us, what is our target? What is our team's target? What can we do? What is the target uh, to begin with? Then we came up, you know, new means a president says, we want to change the culture. Then my target is to not to change the culture. We cannot do that. However, we would like to provide every single opportunities to the shop leaders, shop floor leaders, to experience by themselves and uh, knee deep in the Toyota culture, and they um, they uh, learn something, and they will bring back one or two key things that they would like to apply when they come back in Fremont, California. That is my goal. So uh, it, it doesn't it no need to directly you know, uh, change the culture, but it, all those, you know, uh, uh, their determination and each person has, I want to do this. I want to apply this small thing into my shop floor. As long as they, each person, each, each time that we receive 30 people. So each time all those 30 people have their own personal goals to bring back to California, then that the, the target is attained. So the, Target is something like that, and uh, some people say that it's 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 kind of stupid target. You know, mm -hmm. how can you just uh, evaluate? I don't know, but it's as long as they set the target by themselves. So for workers, we did not force them. They decided voluntarily decided. Okay, this is my goal, and because at the end of the of the entire course, we ask them what is your target to attain when we are back in California, and we formally informally ask them. So that was really. You know, uh, um, each person has different. So 30 people have different target, but that is fine. As long as they set a target, that is our target. Mm -hmm. So uh, target, you, we are not supposed to consider target is more complicated and sophisticated one. No, target, as long as we have some target, that is good. That is a good place to start. Yeah. And so no need to be to set up a very, very complicated target, sophisticated target, then you, you cannot continue. So we we believe the target is something like that. Yes. So uh, no target, no good. Yeah. Any mm -hmm. target is fine. It's kind <laughs> of stupid target. That's fine as long mm -hmm. as you have some target. Based mm -hmm. on the set, after setting target, you can develop action plans to reach the target. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a target, you cannot come come up with any action plans because there is no. No way, no, 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 no star. Uh, so it's so that is how what target means to us. Hmm. I don't, but, but it in so this combination that we've talked about that it's a seemingly impossible target, but don't. Also, oh, okay. No, no, but also the, uh, no two things because you. I what I've learned from you too is, but also not to get hung up on just trying to figure out the target you you need a target that's directional and then you will learn and you can do your pdca cycles because if you spend all your trying to kind kind time trying to come up with the perfect target then you're never taking action so i loved your story about mm -hmm. yes you need to have a challenge target sort of on the big level but you also need a target that's just going to help you move forward and to learn and so, mm -hmm. so i think that's a really wonderful experience you shared here yeah it's, 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 it's so important because seemingly impossible target or 
uh, almost impossible, same thing. But again, target is determined by the need mm -hmm. of your uh, workplace. It's not your choice, but its choice is 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 given by the market or by the need. So mm -hmm. should be. So sometimes it's too difficult to attain. However, it's a target. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you, you cannot survive. So mm -hmm. uh, if you set easy to accomplish target, then um, it, it doesn't help you to develop. So. Target is come from the need necessity, yeah. and uh, but sometimes yeah. it's so far away. Then, even though you cannot attain the target within a certain period of time, it's okay because you set a target and you step forward one year, two years, second years. So you can step phase the approach. You can do that as long as you set the target. Then you can bind every everybody's effort together into one direction so setting without setting a target you cannot bind everybody's attention no everybody goes in the to totally different different uh, uh, directions so uh, ha having a target is so important mm -hmm. and uh, so that that's how we should start at the beginning mm -hmm. thank you does it okay. make sense oh, great rafa yeah. did, did you have something you wanted to add to that yeah, yeah. Let me let me let me show you one one thing. Yeah, uh, uh, is, is is regarding is regarding the the, the four P of the model I've, I've showed you. You know, but but uh, uh, I, I don't find it. I don't find it at the moment. Sorry. Oh yeah, it's in here. Sorry. You know, uh, 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 even 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 Yoshino. You know, the, the four P of, of of the model. You know, is the Priority is the is the is that we cannot buy, uh, we cannot eat an elephant in one day and even in one week yeah uh, and, and and imagine in 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 Toyota they are using housing country uh, it, it's not in here I don't want to show uh, uh, Isao Josino's housing country but even Isao now uh, he's he's been retired from Toyota like to, uh, 15 years ago. And he's still having a plan. He's still having a plan with his targets, with his action plans, with his strategies, and he's writing it in one piece of paper. You know, so so imagine, imagine how, how important it is for for Toyota people. How important it is for 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 Isao. Even 15 years later, he's he's using the same approach that he was using in Toyota. Eh? So, very good point. Thanks, Rafa. Can you bring me back to the, the slide, please? Mm -hmm. okay. All right, great. Thank you. Um, and this also, you know, this follows on from what Mr. Yoshino said. It's one of the reasons we want that challenge target because it's what we learn by not achieving the target um, that makes us smarter. This harkens back to what he said earlier today is that, you know, we learn more from our failures than from our successes. So, and that's one of the reasons. And then also, in addition, so a leader, we need to set that challenge for people, set a target, um, help them move towards something that's going to allow them to learn. But we also need to nurture and support them. So this is where also another connection between that direction and the heart. And so something I think Mr. Yoshino is just really special at is the supporting other people and developing them and, uh, and really helping people improve and solve their own problems. And there are a few things that I wanted that would be great for him to share with you here. There's so many stories. Um, mm -hmm. and so they're all in the book, so you can get that. But just the flavor of hearing him tell them. And his role as a leader was to help each other, uh, help others develop themselves. And that's just so clear on his um, his purpose in life. Uh, so one of the, there's so many different ways that we can help support people. I pulled out of just a few ways that we have talked about. And one is that, um, as I would say, is to set the conditions for success and take responsibility when mistakes happen. And Mr. Yoshino talks about how important this is at Toyota's, cult of Toyota's culture about allowing mistakes and supporting mistakes. And uh, again, it's where that learning comes from. And there's a really powerful story um, that he has, and I'm gonna let him tell part of it here. Sure. Um, I asked him to tell part of it here. It, uh, he actually had not, it was, came out in one of our very first interviews uh, two years ago when we started talking about the very beginning of his, his career. And he remembered the story, Mr. Yoshino, I remember you, you were like, oh my gosh, I had this experience and realizing what a um, important ground, like foundational ex event this was for him on his whole Toyota career. 
Uh, it was an experience he had when, in his orientation, um, multi-month orientation at Toyota when he was assigned to the Modimachi uh, paint shop to do some work. And uh, Mr. Yoshino, I'll let you tell the story to people about the big mistake you made. Okay. Well, when the college graduate, when we joined Toyota, we just go through maybe four or five months training period as an orientation. And uh, during that time, I was uh, the first uh, first couple of weeks I was at orientation and, and in the classroom. Then we each of us are sent to the plant because we are car manufacturers. I was sent to the Motomachi plant where uh, uh, where the small size car manufacturer, I was assigned to the paint shop, but I was not painting the car, but it, it required a lot of skill. So I was sent to the paint preparation, you know, paint mixture and uh, in the storage. And uh, then we, I, we send that paint, um, mixed paint, uh, through the pipe all, all over to the paint shop. So I was supposed to put the uh, paint into the big tank. But at the time, uh, there was two kinds of paint. One is a paint, and another one is solvent. Uh, uh, these days, uh, we have only one kind, but at the time, two kinds. Paint and solvent, we have to put together into one, uh, one tank. Then I was supposed to put paint A and solvent A um, one time in, in one big container and uh, put it put a switch on, then it's a mix, mix up and then it automatically sent to the paint shop. And I, I thought I, I did the right way. Then maybe a couple of hours later, the one of the one of the foreman just rushing to our, uh, you know, paint pre preparation uh, storage and uh, oh, okay, you guys, something is wrong in, in the car. The, the paint does not stay, stick to the car. Something is wrong, bubble. and. So uh, then they asked me, uh, so wh what did you do that? How did you do that? So, oh, yeah, yes, sir, I just put this paint A and paint and solvent A. But when I look at closely at it, then I put solvent B, it's a different solvent I put in the tank, but it's the paint can was sitting on the same area. So, but I was scared because I screw up and uh, they just all the bosses just came in and oh, okay this is a kind of problem so i was so scared they're gonna fire me or they're gonna you know i was mm. so scared then they did not just they did not blame me but oh, okay so you mix up because the paint a and solvent b is sitting on almost very close with each other it's not your fault because anybody can make mistakes you're just newcomer so you're not familiar, you, you did not do that. So uh, instead of blaming me, they just try to find out what should we done? Should we, how, how we have that, we should have done that? And so they, instead of blaming me, they just discuss about what should be done to prevent from the same thing from happening again. And Big Boss later came, came to me, you know, uh, sorry for what happens, but thank you very much for making mistakes because this gives us a chance to correct it, to make Kaizen on how to prevent from the same problem happening again. So I was so satisfied. I was so lucky, not, not so lucky, but I was so, uh, I feel very comfortable. Okay, this is a culture of Toyota people. And uh, this is a, this is not only the paint shop. This we call it, you know, we make a mistake. So uh, bad news first type of culture is prevailing across the company. So when something happens, bad news comes first, should come first. So bad news will bring the good, better idea. Mm -hmm. So nobody is blamed because mm -hmm. we make mistakes. We are, we are human. So that is that is one of the many good aspects of Toyota's mm -hmm. culture. And I was so, so fascinated with this great culture, which we can never find anywhere else in the world. Well, not in the world, but in Japan. Now, so what struck me in that story is about how we, your manager, is, you had hundreds of cars that need to be repainted, and they thanked you for making a mistake. And um, I, I can't imagine that happening in many other companies as well either. So... It's a, it's a really powerful story. And uh, for those of you listening here today, too, this concept of how Toyota has embodied that at all levels of leadership, this um, supporting people and uh, through failure and mistakes, too, carries through 
um, the arc of Mr. Yoshino's experience, both from him as a leader, but also of even bigger experiences of failures um, that we won't talk about here today because it's a very in-depth story, but uh, a failure at the end of his career too and how the, the leaders mm -hmm. really own that mistake as well. Mm -hmm. um, I want to go back, keep, keep going. Yeah. And then we'll have some time for some questions. I have right. shared with you, I have shared with you a, a quote in, in, in the chat regarding uh, Isal's story. You know, that the problem, the yeah. thing is always on the processes. You know, the important thing is the process, not the yeah. people. People can make mistakes. Of course, we are going to have mistakes. But if we have, if we had the perfect process, it wouldn't happen. And the process, mm -hmm. the perfect process is almost impossible. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. But it's a, it's a way. Yeah? And there's another uh, experience that really struck me too um, from Mr. Yoshino, maybe about 10 years later, Mr. Yoshino was talking about how um, he was in a different role in the Tokyo office. And this really um, in, it struck me about how leaders also, when they're supporting people, one of your roles is to teach the process of learning. So leaders don't own the actual learning process, like the actual learning, but how do they create the, the structures and systems for people to learn? Uh, and Mr. Yoshino had a great experience of this when he was asked to write a report for the senior boss at the Tokyo office um, and was basically, um, well, I'll let him tell the story. So Mr. Yoshino, tell, if you can tell people about what happened when you were asked to write this report and you decided not to go to Gemba. Oh, okay. Well, actually, it was uh, around uh, 1972, 73, it oil, right after the oil crisis, and uh, all over the world, in Japan too. And at the time, I was in the public relations department in Tokyo office, right in the middle of Tokyo. And so I have to deal with the uh, press people, the, you know, uh, the, uh, the writers, everything. So it's uh, media people. And so we have to, um, and uh, under the situation of that oil crisis we have to establish toyota has needs to establish some uh, very positive uh, uh, you know a strategy how to cope with the situation so that but big boss in the tokyo office wanted to uh, wanted to know what other top leaders of japanese corporation what kind of strategy uh, public relations uh, strategy they they have uh, in these days so he asked me you know, why don't you, so you were working in the public relations, so why don't you just check, why don't you make a quick research of other major uh, companies like Hitachi, Mitsubishi, and then the Toshiba, or, or the Panasonic, and the Nissan, or other key companies, what kind of uh, um, a public relations strategy they are developing in order to cope with this very fast-moving situation. So I was assigned to that the job but i was so busy taking care of all those media people so i just check only from the library at the time there was no computer no no internet so i just check all the documents in in our library small library also just across the street uh, there was one of the largest uh, library in uh, in that area so i went over there and pick up some of the documents some of the books about all those uh, public relations uh, the organization chart and all those policies. I just went through that and make a very quick A A3 uh, report. And uh, then uh, it was the timing that for me to the report to them with all the maybe 10 or 12 uh, managers around and other uh, bystanders. And then I, I started, I was about to start reporting to them then the big boss just asked me, by the way, Yoshino, just, where did you get this information? And then, oh, yes, sir, just, I just, uh, I was so busy. And so I just uh, went to uh, all the libraries and I believe it's a very important and uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a big data. So I just learned, I just get all those data from the book, from other, all the, all the newspapers and everything. So then he, he asked me, okay, we are now based in Tokyo. You can go to all those companies within 10 minutes taxi drive. You can even walk to some of the companies, but you haven't gone there yet. No, sir. Then he said, he stopped me and, okay, uh, you haven't done that. What do you need to do? You didn't go to Gimba. Just right there, you can talk to the people and uh, hear their voice, real voice. Then you can sense um, all those key things behind their words. But you didn't do that. Why don't you come back? I will give you one one or ten days 
then why don't you do that again and go to Gemba and come back to me? And so I was in the middle. I was so embarrassed because I did not, you know, I was, uh, I, I did a good job in summarizing all these things, but it's not what he wanted to see. So uh, then to make a long story short, I just came back maybe a week or 10 days later. And luckily, not luckily, but all the, the I, all the information I received directly from face-to-face -face interviews uh, from all those uh, couple of companies, and uh, all the information is same as my re original report, which I got it from the library. However, it is not what you know he would like to see. He wanted me to go to those companies, go to the Gimba, talk to the people, and uh, and uh, share. Of, you exchange views through that conversation. You can sense what what they are. They believe is important in the public relations section. So he wanted me. He expect me to do that first before establishing all those A3. So go go to Gemba. Go go to Gemba. Concept is not only for the plant, but also from the office workers too. That is one of the things he wanted to teach me. So I was so happy that his name is Mr. Fuse. Fuse is a he's a managing director, and I was so uh, satisfied, not embarrassed, but at the same time satisfied that he just gave me a chance to go to Gimba again, and which I learned when I was in the Motomachi plant, but I totally forgotten. So this is one of the things that I learned. Go to Gimba is is really important to any area. That because only the truth come from uh, the facts. I used all the documents as an assumption because I did not check, double check with face-to-face -face conversation. So this is, it is still, you know, tells me a lesson that if you want to find out the real truth, then you have to go real, go back to those original place and, and, uh, and uh, uh, check it by yourself. That is a lesson I really learned. So that my life in the Tokyo office in five years is really, really uh, uh, meaningful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I, I thought it was pretty impressive when you know that that you told me as well um, that this manager he said, "Oh, I didn't expect you to have anything different. Like I was, I didn't actually care what you found out. I wanted you to go to Gemba, and so he was really caring about how." learning that process of how to be a good learner and a good leader um, was the most important thing that he was leading with. Uh, so really, yep. really great. Um, probably, probably, uh, Katie, there's th some questions probably could mix all three in one questions regarding, uh, pro but probably Isha cannot hear, listen to me, probably if you can ask him regarding, if he sees a process regarding managerial skills and about short-term thinking and, and about uh, acting as coaches, managers in Toyota and in the rest of the world. I don't know if Yoshino so can... So I can just frame that Mr. Yoshino will have a hard time talking about things that are happening in current day at Toyota and other... Um, yeah. And other he can talk about his experiences and the con the, the sort of the, the concepts of, of what it means to be a, a people-centered leader. Um, I, I, he won't he will have a harder time um, talking about what's currently happening in Toyota or other companies as yeah. well because mm -hmm. he, he's not there in Gemba himself. Um, mm. I, I do think there's some great questions in here. We just have a few more points and maybe we can just finish those stories and then come back to the okay, questions. Perfect, perfect, yeah. mm. um, so thank you. And I do, I do want to just let people know, like asking about questions that are things that are happening today in your companies or trends um, are typically not as, um, as easy for him to have some yeah. insight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so then one other thing, we, and this is, Raphael, you, you talked about this earlier about how important it is for leaders to be curious, ask questions and to listen. Um, mm -hmm. And part of that is letting people learn. And Mr. Yoshino still goes and visits his, his mentor who's in his 80s in, um, outside of uh, Tokyo. And um, Mr. Yoshino learned the importance of asking questions from this, um, from this leader, Mr. Sugira. And Mr. Yoshino, just want maybe share just the one, one short thing about how this this concept of being curious and asking questions is really important as a leader to help support um, others. I see, you know, uh, when I was working, uh, he, my, my mentor and my boss, and his name is Mr. Sugiura, and when I started working for him, I was so impressed with, by the way, he asked questions. One time, you know, he, he wanted to go to the technical center and he wanted to meet a big shot. 
And uh, then he asked me, so, well, Yoshino, why don't you join me? Because it's going to be interesting because we have never you know, talked to all those big shots. So maybe it's going to be a big chance. Then I, while I was listening beside him, how he just asked those questions, he's very good because two, uh, you know, two uh, very el eloquent or two, uh, you know, positive and also it, the person who talks a lot, then it's not too difficult. Because you just try to, you just kick off something, then, then you just start something, then automatically those guys would like to share all his his comment everything. But when, when in, in case that very quiet guy, in, many of the engineers are very quiet, but very very you know big heart, but strong mind. You say, but they are, they are not so much. Uh, speakers but sometimes mr sugura is just you know uh, just beating around the bush and they try to warm up and just maybe first a five minute talking about so many things and so ask questions simple questions then he just ask another question and from the different angle and so so that the, the guy quiet guy feel very happy and we feel comfortable with the pace and everything so mr sugura just mm -hmm. knows how to ask question in a very very nice manner so that people feel very comfortable to speak up so i learned so many things and also learned that mr Segura is he, my mentor he is so nice to ask me to join and uh, because he wanted to me to learn how to ask questions to the people who are so busy and they want to save some time but still they they spare the 30 or 40 minutes to talk to us so uh, so I learned so many things, you know, it's not just like a TV announcer, but he's, he talks like a country gentleman, but the very, very, you know, skillful and also he just get into their heart mindset, makes them feel good to speak up. And so but it is a very great experience to listen to uh, uh, the, the people. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's not that eloquent people is not necessarily a good speaker, but Mr. Sugura speaks slow and speaks just uh, softly, but he is he grabs very key things. And in order to get it, he just asks many, many questions. Then right after he, the guy he warms up, then he just asks right to the center. So yeah. it's amazing, just like just like you you is a hunted fox in the in the forest. Uh, so it's it's very very interesting the way he asks questions. Also, he that is his style to coach his people, including me. So I always try to be nice and try to make people feel happy working uh, in that environment. So uh, I was impressed. I I still I believe that he's one of the best mentor. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You highlight something that you've talked about a lot about this uh, chain of learning that happens at Toyota, about the, the mentorship that leaders have in coaching and developing. We're hearing that through all um, all different stories that you had and then how you've, you've been embodying that as well. Um, we have one more point on, on developing people. And then I think we can, uh, and we'll close with about uh, the importance of learning. And then we'll go to some of these questions that are coming in here. Uh, Rafael, will you put the slides back on and then we'll, uh, yeah. All right, and then uh, just one more point on on this is that Mr. I, one I learned from Mr. Yoshino, and he, he doesn't use these words exactly, but you need to go to Gemba to show that you care. And there's a nuance of this. It's not just going to see facts um, and validating that, but it's, you know, Mr. Cho says, you will see, ask why, show respect. And this is something that uh, Mr. Yoshino really learned for himself as well about developing that human connection. Um, it's not by just respecting the person, but uh, of individually. But what can you tell us a little bit more about that, and then we'll we'll shift into some questions in a moment. Well, actually, when I again back in the maybe early seventies, when I was in the Montemachi plant, and uh, then I, I was my my job was to make all the arrangements for the model change of a car. You know, the car has a big model change every four or five years. And I was in charge of that uh, uh, Cressida, which is a, which is a mid-sized car. And at the time, I was so busy. And so I work on all those paperwork to pass all the key information, the model change information from the technical division to the plant. So uh, it's so important to to pre do precisely. So uh, in the morning, I, I was, I'm so busy to just check all the key information changes to to write it down and uh, bring it to the shop floor. 
So uh, in the morning, I work on all the desk work. In the afternoon, I try my best to just go, come down to the shop floor, go to Gimba, and talk to the foreman, talk to the group leader, team leaders in charge. And of course, it is necessary to do so to, to keep the communication. At the same time, talking to them face to face, you can you can feel what they are thinking, whether they are happy working on that, what is their major problem they are facing right now. All those things, if you stay there for more than 30 minutes talking and uh, talking about so many things, then it, it's they feel very happy that to, uh, uh, for me to come down from f- shop, from, uh, from the office down there, instead of se- se- sending it by mail, company mail, but I just come to bring myself over there. So they feel so happy to receive uh, the young guy coming and stay there and talking and listening. So uh, I'm just to see things uh, uh, in front of me, but at the same time, I, I, I succeeded in getting to know it all those key people more deeply and at the same time they know about me so which is very very important for me because uh, i i was so convinced that oh with these great people that's why we make good cars we don't yeah. cheat just like other companies we don't cheat they don't cheat so uh, i i learned all these the personality and everything not only the job related things but they talk about their family, they talk about the friend, they talk about the background, they talk about the hometown. So uh, it's very, very nice to, to create any good good you know, rapport, good relations with them. So that is one of the things I learned. I was younger, but I learned so many things. The people mindset, I think, was developed in me when I was in the Motomachi plant. Yeah, it's the, the, that human connection of the heart. And I want That's to end... Right. Uh, and on a point, the, the sixth point. So going back to the leader's role is also to always develop yourself. And you see, in Mr. Yoshino tells stories about this of his leaders developing themselves. And um, there's some great things about this Conpro program, which um, it, we, weren't, we aren't touching in here. Uh, but I want you to just reflect on this, and then we'll go to some of the questions about why as a leader is it important to both helping other people lead and learn, but also for yourself to be learned as, as well. Well, actually, leaders, it is not supposed to know everything. You know, mm-hmm. leaders, decision, the president, also the executives, their major role is to make important decisions, to make sure that people are working safely and, and more efficiently. So they don't have to know everything on what's happened on the shop floor. So you, they just, you know, assign all the works to the people down there. So uh, it's it's a it's trust is based, and uh, so uh, and also we make mistakes, and it's 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 a very very common understanding. We make mistakes, so we always uh, sh- should be ready to find a problem and to take some countermeasures to improve it. That is a, an ongoing process. It's not one time. So because we make mistakes, even though we don't want to, so that type of concept always. Uh, prepare for the worst, prepare for mistakes, and prepare that we are not supposed to believe we are perfect. We are always making mistakes, even though we don't want to. So always improvement or Kaizen mindset is very, very important. And always, if we fail to keep it, then we will fail anything, everything. So, and you know, the, one of the key comments coming from the uh, uh, chairman of AG Toyota is that I, I still remember that if you are content with what you are, then it, that's the beginning of the corruption. So mm-hmm. he said that comment when Toyota is growing so fast and to become number one in the number one and number two in the world. At that time, maybe people can be so happy and oh, we are the best. But uh, no, Mr. AG Toyota said, okay, mm-hmm. you guys. We have to be careful not to be too happy because, you know, we still we are still on the eighth steps of, of the ten steps. So we are still eight. We have two more steps to go to the to the perfect situation. So we are not supposed to be too happy. So that kind of a concept is in you know, a prevail across a company. So we always keep learning. We are not, you know, uh, we are not the you know, we we are we are the best. So uh, that's why. That is one of the key concepts, which we don't talk about it so often, but we can sense because Mm. Big Shot is so serious about it. We have to think 
prepare for the worst. We have to prepare for some mistakes. So uh, uh, that is the concept that is passed down from top management to the next uh, layer, then all the way come down to the young people like me. So uh, I can sense it. So uh, that is is not, you know, not well known in the world, but that is one of the very, very key factors what makes Toyota as it is. And sometimes it's not a number, but mindset and readiness and also uh, the, 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 the care about the people working for them. So all those invisible things, and it's difficult to explain, but all those things which you cannot see, but you can sense it. Mm-hmm. And that is part of the many, many great secrets mm-hmm. of Toyota's success, I believe. Yes. Mm-hmm. You once told me the only secret to Toyota is its attitude towards learning. And I think that really encompasses everything we've talked here. Um, yeah. you know, I want to leave some time for, actually, I have that quote in here too. Where is it? The, uh, do, do, do. Yeah, here we go. The only, the only secret to Toyota is attitude towards learning and its attitude towards people. So let's uh, go into some of these questions. Thank you, Mr. Yoshino. And we can uh, see, there was a question in here I thought was um, interesting that you might be able to comment on about the concept of shuhari and um, you know the, uh, about lear- how, how to learn in a sort of an apprenticeship model and how that, how you think of that concept as it relates to how you were learning and leading at Toyota. Uh, say it again. What is what is the question? No, the, the shuhari, the the C one do one, like the C one uh, do one master one uh, concept that came out of the martial arts. That's sort of foundational to um, to process. a lot of culture. Do you maybe you don't you're not familiar with that yourself? Uh, no. So I'll, I'll phrase that a different way. Um, oh. One time we had talked about uh, how. Uh, Coaching is a bit like learning how to make sushi and the, the apprenticeship model that happens with learning by observing, learning by doing, and then learning by, um, by mastering. And how, how has that concept been something that, uh, that you've taken with you as you have been learning or developing other people at Toyota as well? Sort of, um, yeah. I see. Well, it's, you know, the- Within Toyota, you know, learning come from your own experience. If you learn, if you like, you learn. Oh, I learned something very completely. It, when you uh, you read all the 160 pages of book and you just understand everything, then you feel like, oh, I understand everything. But it's not complete unless you put it into practice or into mm-hmm. some of the real thing. Apply to real thing and check whether your learning is is it really works or not. So action plans. So learning something is not is one way, but put it into practice and make sure that it's really, really great learning by doing it and, and double checking whether you learn it and knee deep. So that is that is the concept of, of our learning. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know whether that is uh, the right answer to your question, but it's always, you know, I wanted to action and... Uh, not only the theory. So always we do something instead of think, instead of, uh, of, of feel, but the feeling or think is happens in your mindset. But uh, action, you have, to, you have to use your, your hands and legs and everything. You have to move around. Yeah. So that is the only way we can learn something. And, uh, and also you, through, through talking. If you learn something, you believe you learn something, then you have to express in your own word. Mm. Then you can tell. That is exactly what I'm coaching to my student, to my university. And uh, so in my university, just I always try to encourage people to speak up. I, I, I advise them, don't try to be perfect. Don't try to be nice. Just that, whatever comes to your mind, speak up. And, uh, and I, I don't, you know, I don't stop it, but it's just speak up. Just it's so important, mm. and that is a that is a culture that I was raised. So sometimes I make stupid comments, but people don't laugh within <laughs> Toyota. They don't laugh because it's oh he's he's a little bit different. Yeah. But uh, you know, ten people have different opinions. He's one of them. So it's very very nice nice culture that uh, 
um, um, always try to be different, not not different. Try to be uh, um, put into practice and uh, and make sure that your learning is is uh, is uh, sturdy and your learning is right. And mm. uh, you know, go to Gemba is the same concept. Go to Gemba, double check what you have learned in the book. Make sure you look at it, touch it, and feel it. Then your learning is not necessarily completed, but is is reached the, closely to the reality. Thank you. Uh, Matt Weir asked an uh, interesting question. He worked at Toyota as well. And given that you've had experience in Toyota across many different um, places, so you worked at Toyota in Japan, and then you worked at Toyota in the US, and then for Toyota Motor Sales in the US mm -hmm. for the remaining about 10 years of your career, uh, I think you can uh, have some interesting insights into this. He asks about um, Toyota's efforts to close the gap or to, trick, to teach its thinking and culture um, in other cultures. So he, I'm sorry, I'll just read this. He's reflecting about Toyota's effort to share um, its culture um, and attributes. There continues to be some short-term thinking organizations that, that, ha that don't have Toyota's mindset. And I know you had that experience too with Toyota Motor Sales, and I'm wondering if maybe you can comment on, um, what, you know, what do you think would have helped to have a greater impact to, to to really teach that culture to these other organizations? Nice. Well, actually, yeah, I, yeah. After you know, so many uh, years working at uh, Toyota City, where Toyota's very very down to earth culture started, then I just went to Los Angeles, California, and I stayed there uh, for 10 years. So totally different culture. And different people working there, even though the, the company name is uh, start with Toyota, but totally different culture. I'm not saying it's good or bad. Different culture, different people, different business, different work environment, different target, different customers. So uh, it's so different. Then I was struggling with my partner because he was raised in the totally different culture. I I was raised in different culture, but we are partners, we work together. So always, always conflict. So what I did is that, you know, I he has, he his style is so different. My style is so different. Uh, I would like him to, to do a little bit about my own style too, as well as his style. So what I did is that I tried to show it I try to show it. Always get go to go to Gimba type of concept. I always try to go back to the real, um, real. Oh, I cannot see you. Can you see me? Uh, yeah, I don't know. You're still there. If just if you keep talking. Uh, you know. okay. Oh, okay, okay. Anyway, so what I did is that in order to convince him by talking, but I just try to do things by my by myself and show that what uh, my comment was right by doing things, uh, by the going to Gemba and make sure that my comment was right or wrong. Always go to Gemba or go to, to the people uh, instead of talking on the phone, but go to go to the place in the next building and talk to them and uh, exchange views and bring back all those key information. And it's slightly different from from the fact that you 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 hear from the telephone or emails, so always try to do show it, and uh, my attitude, and try to convince, not convince, try to show it to my partner. Then it took so many years for him to to change his style a little bit, and you cannot change people overnight because once you just grown up in one culture, it's almost difficult. But it's not impossible but it's possible and uh, as long as you're patient and you stick to your own style and uh, and mm -hmm. show that the the, the go to game by concept or uh, you know and also respect people type of all these key concept really works to anybody so uh, i always try to 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 show it uh, by my own style and uh, then he witnessed me the way I do that, the way that every time I, I I need to to find something, that I go there next building and walk maybe 15 minutes, walk to the the across the street and to other department and ask them, 
And instead, in in his case, he just he just called them on the phone. Oh, okay, I understand. Then he makes decision by only the telephone conversation. Instead, I just go there and and uh, talk to them and, and see all those data and everything. So I I was showing I I showed, and I don't know how much he could learn, but uh, I believe I made a small influence to my partner. That's great. And, uh, so. Yeah, so but of course it does not change his style and uh, totally. But I believe he started to seriously think about uh, just getting closer to my style a little bit. I could sense it from time to time. So that was that was what I tried to do. So you cannot change people overnight, particularly when it comes to the mentality. No, it's impossible. So, mm -hmm. but still there is uh, something you can do it. And so it's go to game, but type concept is more broader meaning. Yeah. I don't know whether that is the answer yeah. to your question, but that yeah, comes sure. to my mind. Thank mm. you. Thank you. And we're, we're, we're almost out of time. So I want to thank you so much, okay. Mr. Gino, for sharing your experiences. I wanted to let people know how they can find out more about the book. There's a link that I put in here, and then there's a link here. Um, next week, we should have the pre-order up on, um, on Amazon, and there's a lot more information about the book on this website here, Learning to Lead, Leading to Learn. Um, so, and then of course, in another time, you can uh, join us in Japan and just continue to have the dialogue. Um, there's so many rich stories that Mr. Yoshino didn't touch on in the book, especially um, touching on Matt's comment there about how do, you, how do you create this culture? And there's some stories of success about Numi and some stories of failure um, in a water ski boat adventure that Mr. Yoshino led. And so there's a lot of richness that um, of learning about success and failure and and developing culture in the book there. So thank you, thank you so much, everyone. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Katie. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. much. Uh, hey, I will, I will do, I will do a final, a final survey. Yes, one minute final survey. Yes, for everyone that is still in the in the in the room. Okay, please uh, uh, do the final survey. Yes, you know. If you like it, if you don't like it, evaluation. If you like the the model, eh? if you would like to participate in future events or webinars, or even in the in the future Japanese study missions to Japan, yeah, I have I have also sent you my email and my Twitter account in there just to to keep in touch with all of you, and I fully recommend you uh, to. To participate in the launch team of the of Katie's book, yeah, that is going to be. I'm 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 anxious to read it. I'm anxious to read it, <laughs> Katie. Yeah, so, thank you very much for for your time. Thank you very much, Isal, well, for you. your. Great, and we'll uh, there. There'll be other opportunities, and hope you can be involved in some other pre-launch activities uh, with webinars and podcasts and mm -hmm. uh, with your your content. Um, I also had some other content that I didn't share here. And um, if you go to my website, you can see some of that information there as well. So. Okay, thank Katie. You. And we have pending to, to do a, a common okay, Japanese mission, American and Spanish yeah. or Euro European. That, right. like some, sometimes I've done it. This, hopefully right. this year we can do it together. Yes. Okay. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Good thank night. Thank you okay. very much. Good night. Bye. 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 Thank you. Good night. Good night. Peace out. Good night. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Mr. Yoshino. Thank you, Mr. Bye. Thank, thank you, Rob. Bye.